One minute ago, that is not a figure of speech. One minute ago, a new piece of outbound analysis surfaced quietly, clinically, without headlines, and it fundamentally changes how some mission teams think about what happened after three I Atlas left the inner solar system. Most people believe the story ended when the object faded from view. They are wrong. What appears to have happened after three I Atlas departed is more unsettling than anything we watched while it was here. Before we go any further, pause for just a second. If you are watching this right now, comment below and tell me where you're watching from, country or city. I want to see how far this story has traveled, because what we're about to discuss has global implications. Now listen carefully. When 3i Atlas exited the inner solar system, everyone expected one thing, decline, signal loss, diminishing activity, predictable behavior. That is not what the outbound analysis seems to show. Instead, post-departure monitoring began to flag a series of anomalies that were never meant to be headline material. These weren't the dramatic discoveries from closest approach. These were quiet patterns emerging after the object had already passed us when, according to every standard model, nothing interesting was supposed to be happening anymore. Yet something still appears to have been happening, and it started with timing. At the point where 3i Atlas crossed the region where solar influence should begin dropping below critical thresholds, its behavior was expected to stabilize. Radiation pressure weakens, thermal gradients flatten, outgassing shuts down. But instead of stabilizing, the outbound data did something strange. It diverged. Multiple independent instruments working at different wavelengths using different tracking techniques began reporting trends that did not match the usual decay curves. At first, engineers treated this as calibration error, then as software drift, then as observational noise. That explanation didn't survive long because the same pattern showed up again and again and again. To be very precise, this wasn't theory. It was outbound telemetry appearing to contradict the standard expectations for a fading, passive object. 3i Atlas was no longer near. It was no longer in strong planetary gravity wells. And yet, some aspects of its behavior still seemed to be changing. On paper, that should not be possible. Teams sometimes describe this phase as post-exit behavior analysis, a routine stage that almost never produces surprises. Except this time, the analysts didn't just note one oddity. They saw several. Each one, by itself, would be uncomfortable. Taken together, they are alarming. The first outbound anomaly concerns structural coherence. For a natural interstellar object, the expectation is simple. Over time, it becomes less organized. Microfractures spread. Volatiles escape. Internal stresses leave the body more disordered, not more unified. But the reconstructed signal profile for 3i Atlas suggests the opposite trend. Not visually, this isn't about sharp new images, but mathematically. The way it reflected energy. The way tiny forces seemed to affect it. The way its motion dampened instead of becoming more chaotic. The outbound behavior looked less like a rock slowly falling apart, and more like a system settling into a stable configuration. That is not how we expect a random comet nucleus to evolve in deep space. The second anomaly involves motion regularity. As an object leaves the inner solar system, small perturbations usually add up. Radiation pressure, residual spin, asymmetric outgassing, every little nudge introduces more uncertainty. Models expect the error bars on trajectory prediction to grow with time. In the outbound data for 3i Atlas, that trend appeared to reverse. The margin of error didn't expand. It tightened. Think about what that implies. An object moving farther away under weaker observation should be harder to forecast, not easier. Yet 3i Atlas became more predictable the farther it went, as if uncertainty itself was being suppressed rather than allowed to accumulate. That doesn't prove anything artificial, but it is the kind of behavior that forces mission analysts to treat it less like a drifting fragment and more like a system actively seeking stability. Then came the third anomaly, where internal conversations stopped being routine. After 3i Atlas crossed into the outbound regime, long-range instruments began picking up secondary signatures in its surrounding environment. These were weak, transient, 
easy to dismiss if you weren't looking for them, but they kept appearing, patterns repeating at intervals that were too precise to shrug off as pure noise. You won't see these described as signals in cautious language. A softer term is used instead, correlated emissions. That phrase matters. It avoids claiming intent while still acknowledging coordination. The emissions weren't strong, they weren't dramatic, but their timing appeared synchronized across different observation platforms separated by enormous distances. Natural processes can produce variability, but they don't typically produce coordinated variability in exactly the same pattern across multiple independent detectors. At that point, review procedures escalated, not because anyone had a theory ready, but because the pile of unanswered questions had crossed a threshold where standard categories no longer fit. Space agencies don't panic easily. They track near-Earth asteroids, massive flares, radiation storms. For outbound data on a fading interstellar object to trigger special scrutiny means one thing. What they were seeing no longer sat comfortably inside normal comet behavior. By then, 3i Atlas was already gone. No interception possible. No chance of new close-up imagery. Only data. And that outbound data seemed to be telling a story nobody was eager to spell out in a press release. Because if these patterns hold up under scrutiny, then three, I Atlas wasn't simply reacting to its environment. It was transitioning. That word appears again and again in technical style summaries people have reconstructed or inferred. Transition, not decay, not dissipation. Transition implies phase, states, a before and an after, which raises a deeply uncomfortable possibility. If the close approach wasn't the main event, if the flyby wasn't the purpose, then what exactly was happening after it left? And even more unsettling, why did the strangest behavior seem to begin only once it was already on its way out? We're only at the beginning of this part of the story. In the next section, we'll talk about how this outbound behavior forced analysts to abandon some of their usual models and why treating 3i Atlas like a passive lump of ice stopped making sense. Before we continue, make sure you're subscribed. This isn't a one-off video. This is a sequence. And what comes next is something most outlets aren't even trying to piece together. One final question before moving on. If 3i Atlas changed after leaving us, who or what was it changing for? When the outbound data sets from 3i Atlas were fully reviewed by mission and modeling teams, something highly unusual happened. Several of the standard internal models weren't just tweaked. They were effectively set aside, not lightly revised, not gently updated, retired. In scientific work, you expect models to be wrong in detail. You adjust parameters, rerun simulations, publish improved fits. You don't usually throw entire frameworks out unless they fail at a very basic level. That is what this outbound behavior appears to have done. 3i Atlas didn't just violate a prediction or two, it undermined some of the assumptions those predictions were built on. Why does that matter? Because every object moving through space is supposed to exist inside certain constraints. Even when you don't know the exact composition, you can still box its behavior in with mass, momentum, and known energy exchanges. The details may be messy, but the edges of that box are solid. The outbound patterns from 3i Atlas pushed against those edges. Analysts noticed that decay-based projections, the ones that assume a passive object losing energy and structure, kept overshooting what the data showed. The models expected instability, progressive fragmentation, growing entropy. Instead, the telemetry looked more like consolidation. So teams tried something rare. They began running simulations normally reserved for spacecraft and controlled systems. Not because they had decided 3i Atlas was artificial, but because the only tools that fit the data were tools designed for objects with internal regulation. That shift alone should give you pause. On paper, 3i Atlas was still being called a comet. But under the hood, the algorithms used to interpret it suddenly looked more like the ones used for probes. When treated as a passive fragment, the outbound data refused to make sense. When treated as an active system, the fits began to improve, not perfectly, but enough to raise eyebrows. One of the most striking outbound findings involved energy balance. 
as 3i Atlas moved away from the sun, its activity should have dropped in measurable ways, cooling, fading, shutting down. Instead, some emission components remained roughly constant, as if something were compensating for the loss of solar input. To be clear, nobody is officially claiming a power source. What they can say is that certain outputs did not fall off in the way simple input-output bookkeeping would predict. In any closed system analysis, that is a red flag. Notice the timing again. The strongest anomalies did not occur at closest approach. They did not occur under maximum public scrutiny. They appeared in the quieter outbound phase. That matters because it removes a familiar excuse. During flybys, instruments saturate, pointing changes quickly, and interpretation becomes messy. Outbound monitoring, by contrast, tends to be cleaner and more controlled. If anything, those data points are easier to trust, and those are the points suggesting something counterintuitive. Three, I Atlas behaved as if the inner solar system was not the destination, but the trigger, as if coming close to the sun and inner planets activated a process that only became fully visible once the object was already leaving. Within internal language, a more neutral term appears for this idea, post-encounter state change. State change implies function, not accident. Then there was what some engineers informally called the recalibration event. During mid-review, they noticed small but persistent discrepancies between predicted and observed motion. Even after correcting for all known forces, gravity, radiation pressure, known outgassing, the trajectory still showed micro adjustments. Adjustments that favored stability, not efficiency. That distinction matters. Natural objects tend to minimize energy in messy, chaotic ways. Controlled systems often spend energy to maintain a desired configuration. The math hinted that something about 3i Atlas's outbound motion looked more like active damping of perturbations than simple drifting. To test whether this was just a quirk of one data pipeline, agencies requested independent analysis from non-US assets. European, Japanese, and Australian facilities all reported outbound irregularities consistent with the same broad picture. Subtle adjustments, not random scatter. Different instruments, different teams. Similar conclusions about the same underlying weirdness. Whatever 3i Atlas was doing on the way out, it appeared to be doing it consistently enough that multiple observers saw traces of the same behavior. Equally telling is what didn't happen. There was no explosion, no dramatic breakup on camera, no spectacular transformation. And that is precisely why none of this made the front page. The change was subtle, but systemic. Eventually, analysts reached a point where treating 3i Atlas as a single body object simply stopped working. That doesn't mean it visibly split. It means its outbound response patterns looked more like those of an internally differentiated system components reacting on slightly different timescales, yet still coordinated. Natural bodies can display that kind of behavior only when they are failing catastrophically. 3i Atlas instead appeared to be settling. An interstellar object comes in, behaves strangely, and then only really begins to look organized once it has already left the neighborhood. That prompted a question some scientists asked only off the record. What if the close passage wasn't observation at all? But calibration? What if the inner solar system provided reference conditions, radiation levels, gravitational fields, electromagnetic noise that allowed 3i Atlas to adjust itself? No one is officially claiming intent. No one is officially claiming intelligence. But the outbound data forced people to talk about function-like behavior responses that resemble erosion less and completion more. After that, something else changed, not in the data, but in how it was discussed. Updates slowed. Cross-department summaries grew more cautious. Public-facing documents stopped mentioning 3i Atlas altogether. Not because it didn't matter, but because internally, it no longer fit neatly into any existing category. When an object doesn't fit a category, institutions tend to move slowly, the question nobody wants to frame directly. By the time outbound analysis was fully integrated into the broader picture, one quiet conclusion had already reshaped how some agencies treated 3i Atlas. 
it was no longer being thought of purely in the past tense. Instead of closing the file, they expanded it. Monitoring windows that normally end once an object leaves immediate relevance were extended. Long range tracking assets received standing instructions. Data that would usually be archived quietly moved into ongoing reanalysis queues. That alone tells you this wasn't seen as just another visitor. Why? Because after synthesizing the outbound telemetry, some internal risk frameworks shifted not to label 3i Atlas a threat, but to acknowledge something more ambiguous. Uncertainty of function. Uncertainty of function doesn't mean we don't know what it's made of or we don't know where it came from. It means this, we cannot say with confidence what it was doing. And that matters. Risk is not only about impact, probability, or collision energy. Risk also lives in unpredictability. Once 3i Atlas's behavior moved outside the comfort zone of known common analogs, it crossed a line in those frameworks. In response, some passive monitoring programs were quietly upgraded to active correlation modes. Not just track where it is, but watch for things that might be associated with its passage. Secondary signatures in space weather data, statistical anomalies in dust and particle environments, subtle changes that might align with where and when 3i Atlas moved through space. In other words, part of the scientific community stopped asking only, where is it now? They also began asking, what, if anything, did it change? Here is the core assumption now being challenged. We have always treated interstellar objects as passive visitors. They come in, they leave, shaped by their origin, barely affected by a brief encounter with us. 3i Atlas pushes back against that assumption. Its most coherent outbound behavior appeared after the encounter. Its anomalies only aligned clearly once the flyby was complete. Its data hinted not at depletion, but at conclusion. That leads to a possibility you will not see written in any official report, but you can feel it between the lines. What if the inner solar system wasn't affected by 3i Atlas? What if 3i Atlas was the one being affected? What if proximity to the sun, earth, and our electromagnetic environment provided something it needed, a checklist, a calibration field, a final missing condition for a process to finish? That idea remains speculative but it doesn't go away because one simple fact remains. The case has not been fully closed. Agencies do not quietly monitor objects that are truly irrelevant. So for now, this is where we stand. An interstellar object came, it passed. And only after it left did its behavior hint at patterns we do not yet know how to classify. If you're still here, you understand why this story isn't over. Make sure you're subscribed. Share this with someone who believes space is always simple and predictable. And once again, tell me in the comments where you're watching from, because whatever 3i Atlas truly was, it didn't pass just one country or one city. It passed all of us. Stay updated on the latest discoveries in interstellar exploration. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Hit like if you found this update valuable. Thanks for watching and God bless you and your loved ones.